This week on Quality Digest Live, if you don't know what control charts or capability analysis uh, tools are, or if you need a refresher, you don't want to miss the next few minutes. So put on your quality geek hack and join us in 30 seconds. Welcome back to Quality Digest Live. QDL is your weekly look and who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality to Digest. And today, we are going to talk about uh, control charts and capability analysis. So for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with control charts, these are used to study how uh, a process changes over time. It was developed in the, uh, in the 1920s by Dr. Walter Schuhart. You may have refer refer heard to them referred to as Schuhart charts. Um, they are an invaluable tool for determining if a manufacturing or business process is in a state of control. And we'll talk about what state of control means in just a little bit here. Capability analysis is a set of calculations used to assess whether a system is able to meet a set of specifications or requirements. So if all of that has your head spinning, here to unspin it is Matt Savage, Vice President of Product Development for PQ Systems. Matt, thanks for joining us today on Quality Digest Live. Sure, Dirk. Glad to be here. So first, uh, before we get going, I threw out some terminology there. Uh, one is state of control. So when we state of control, when we say state of control, what do we actually mean? We're really just talking about a process, a system that's stable and that's predictable. So if it's in a state of statistical control, it just really means that the process is, is expected in the future to do what it's been doing in the past. And and control charts help us to do that, right? Control charts are what talking about this, this state of control. Is, is that right? Right. So a, a control chart is going to help tell you statistically whether or not your process is, in fact, stable or whether or not you've got some anomalies or special causes or out of control points, whatever term you want to use. So, yeah, a control chart is just a tool that's going to be used. It's just a simple run chart, if you will, with a little bit of math or statistics that help give you clues when the process may have changed or if, it, in fact, um, it did change, it's going to give you some clues about that. And can we, I, you, you sent me a couple, of, I was just trying to bring them up here, so I got them up. You, you sent me a couple of control charts kind of as a, as a show and tell. So like one I have right here, I believe I have an XMR chart up. Can you just tell us a little bit, for those who aren't familiar with what they're actually seeing here, when we, when we look at this chart, what kind of data are we actually looking at? Right, so the chart we have on the screen there is actually uh, uh, restaurant weekly sales data. So it's not from manufacturing widgets, it's just data over time, and that's a control chart, it has to have data over time, so week one, week two, et cetera. So the top chart is really the chart of each week how the sales were, the average of those sales for the entire 20, 30 weeks that you're looking at. The bottom chart is a variability chart, which is really how much variation was there in sales week to week. So there are two different charts, the individuals or X chart at the top and the moving range or variability chart at the bottom. And then the other part of it is just some statistical control limits. And so looking at this, how does somebody know whether they're in a state of control? Right, so there are different tests you can use. Uh, one test that I think every organization agrees to is if you have a point above the upper limit or below the lower limit, you would consider that out of control or worth investigating. Then there are other rules like seven consecutive points above the mean or seven below or seven increasing. Some organizations use eight, some even use nine. There are lots of different tests that you can use. And when you have one of these conditions, one of these uh, unique circumstances, you'll typically see points on the chart, perhaps a red square or something like that, that indicates that that process is statistically different and therefore it's worth your time to investigate and see what exactly happened. It might be something good, it may be something, well, not so good. And so 
So by, by plotting this data, plotting the dots here, and looking at where they fall between, looks like we got uh, upper control limits and lower control limits, or where they are around the mean and so forth, you can tell how your, pro you get a feel for how your process is doing. Exactly, and, and if it is in a state of control, if nothing changes, you're gonna expect that pattern to continue into the future. That is, you can say with some degree of certainty, this is what you expect to have happen going forward. And that's really a, a control chart is, is helping you give you guidance that if nothing changes, this is what you should expect next week, next month, the following week, et cetera. So there's probably a lot of people out there who were in the same position I was back in, uh, I worked in, in manufacturing, electronics manufacturing back in the, the late 70s, early 80s. And I didn't see a control chart. I didn't even know what they were. Uh, I, I didn't work in the quality department, but I don't remember anybody in the quality department talking about control charts or shoe heart charts um, uh, until just before I left electronics, which is, was in the mid 80s. So even though they've been around since the 20s, right? So my question is, what were people doing before these? I mean, how, how, what is this adding that the quality guys weren't doing b beforehand. I mean, they, they must have had some way of assessing whether they were producing a quality product or not, right? Um, okay, so I'm not a historian and I'm not, I wasn't working in the industry back, way back then, Dirk. Uh, but I think, <laughs> not quite that old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think a lot back then, it was a lot of inspection. It was simply scrap and re rework. Okay. How much scrap did we have? How much rework did we have to do? maybe even adding up that sort of thing. I don't think it was more of a prevention culture, it was more of a detection culture, what happened, and that's all that, that was going on. Oh, that's, that, that's my guess. So actually, you bring up a good point. So, and there's probably a lot of companies out there that do that now, is they're still in, well, uh, I've got too much scrap, I need to reduce my scrap, so they're looking at after the fact. You know, I'm producing scrap, I don't want to produce as much scrap, what do I need to do to produce less scrap? But they're constantly looking at scrap. It's, it's, it's after the fact. It's not what you're talking about. Control charts help you build kind of a prevention in. You get an, uh, a feel for what your process is doing. Right. And that's the whole idea with, with SPC charts, control charts, is it's more of a prevention culture versus a detection culture. So that as you're going along, you're preventing those um, scrap parts and products. Uh, you're preventing rework to have, having occurred. And we're, we're talking, like in the charts you showed here, uh, we're, we're talking like hard, kind of hard data. I can think in terms of manufacturing where I might be looking at the, the number of defects or how long it takes to you know, produce a you know, particular part. But this doesn't, th this kind of control chart can be used for anything that's measurable, right? Oh yeah, and, and when we uh, get new employees, especially interns, and, and we're kind of exposing them to this, I ask them things like, do you have uh, maybe bank account statements or electricity bills or some, something like that on a monthly basis? You've got data over time and you can plot that. Um, if it's even in, in a manufacturing setting, you can use it for many non-manufacturing applications. And in the accounting area, you could look at sales, receivables, aging receivables. You could look at all kinds of things that's not uh, you know, manufacturing widgets and that sort of thing. You don't have to use it, I'll, I'll say the way it was developed back in the Bell Labs in, in the 20s. You, you can use it for many different processes, whether it be manufacturing or service environments. Okay, now, so we've been talking about control charts and you know, whether your process is, is in control. Uh, let's move on to capability analysis because this is something that I think uh, a lot of people, even if they're familiar with control charts, there is some confusion over what capability analysis is and how you use it and so forth. So why don't you describe to us, first of all, what is capability analysis? Sure, um, capability analysis, um, it can be confusing, but if you think of it nothing more than a tool to use or to evaluate how good you're doing. Um, if you think about our, our sons and daughters or, or kids in school, we know how they're doing by the use of a report card. They get letter grades, A, B, C, et cetera. That's in a way, a type of capability analysis. It tells their customer, the parents, the teachers, others, how they're doing. So capability analysis is some simple calculations 
that's designed to communicate how good is this process? Is the process capable of producing the, I'll say the part within spec or not? So it's a good communication tool. And this is just a, this is what, a, a, a number? Exactly, yep. There are different um, indexes out there. So a very common popular one is CPK. Another one is PPK. It's just a number, like a letter grade. So if I said, you know, I got a C in mathematics, you would know how well I did. If I said I got an A, you would know about how well I did. So the, the capability numbers, the CPK of one or 1.33 or 1.66 or whatever that number is, the higher that number, the better. Okay. Now, I understand that, that one of the criteria for capability analysis is that you have to do this on a process that is already stable, a process that's already in, in control. Is that, is that right? I mean, you can't really do this if your process is going all over the place anyway. Right. So I talked a, a little bit about uh, capability and control charts. And with control charts, you've got a mean of your data, you've got upper and lower control limits or amount of variation, a standard deviation. When you talk about capability analysis, one of the prerequisites, it's built on the assumption that your process is already stable and then you're gonna evaluate how good or how bad it is. So get it stable and predictable first and then assess or tell me, okay, is the process doing what it should be doing? If it's all over the place, I would focus the effort and energy more on, on getting it in control first. Okay, now you have a, uh, a webinar, I should say we have a webinar coming up um, uh, that's gonna talk about this. It's a, a control charts and capability analysis. Um, uh, that's May 7th at 11 a.m. Pacific and uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, tell us a little bit about what, what you can expect to see in that webinar. Right, well first, it's not statistics. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about statistics. There's a little bit of math, but it's really more concepts and getting someone who's very new to this or has had very little exposure or perhaps someone who's been intimidated by it, uh, a master black belt coming in talking to them about it. This webinar is more of a brief overview of control charts and capability analysis. I hope that when people attend and they leave, they have a better understanding. So maybe you've got an accountant at your company and he or she has never been exposed to a control chart or capability analysis, that accountant could walk away and have a, a better understanding. So I'm gonna give some tools, some tips on how to use these effectively and what these indices mean. Okay, and again, that's uh, uh, the name of this webinar is Control Charts and Capability Analysis. You can see a link to the registration there uh, underneath, the, uh, underneath your player page there. That's May 7th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and Matt is going to be presenting it, right? It's gonna be you, Matt? Um, I think so, that's okay. the plan. <laughs> that's the plan, yeah. okay. So Matt hopefully will be here presenting. I'll be there fielding your questions and sending those questions on to Matt so that we can answer your questions about control charts and capability analysis. Uh, like Matt said, it isn't statistics heavy. So um, anybody can, uh, can join this webinar and get something out of it. Matt, thanks for joining us today. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you at the webinar. All right, and that is it for today's Quality Digest Live. Uh, as usual, if there's someone or some topic that you would like to see, in the, see on the show, send us your uh, suggestion to qdl at qualitydigest.com and we will uh, try to get it on the show. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week. So long.